Saturday morning soccer and the Bushes are on the sidelines. Get in there, Amatea. This election, Grant and Rose Bush are voting strategically. I'm voting Greens both ways, pretty certain, because um, I know Labour's going to get in. Well, <laughs> touch some wood. I'm pretty certain Labour will get in, so I don't think they need the help. Rose likes the Greens GE policies and worries about what her kids are eating. Next month she'll go Greens but vote Labour in the Tauranga electorate. Neither want the Greens to run the country. I wouldn't want Greens to be the ruling part. I think they're too small a party but I definitely want them in there pushing from behind to, to make sure Labour are going to keep up with all their environmental things. But no, I don't want Greens running the country, that's for sure. As former New Zealand first voters, the Bushes felt betrayed in 1996 when Winston Peters formed the coalition with National. Yeah, I mean, I was really annoyed when he went with National because we specifically really didn't want National as a coalition partner with um, NZ first. So, yeah, I think we've moved on. There's other parties that, you know, sort of do better for us as a family. Across town, Tutata is another who felt robbed when New Zealand first backed National. Uh, it was enough for me to want to change off the general role and go into the Māori role, which I did do. I think I'll give him a bit of time. <laughs> a bit of time. I'm, I'm willing to take another chance with him again. He's definitely Winston for Tauranga as thus far, but nationally as a whole, I wouldn't mind a uh, joining of Labour and New Zealand first again. Tarong is said to be home to the newly wed and the nearly dead. But things are changing as more and more young business people arrive back from overseas. Once known as $10 Tauranga, these young people want jobs that pay more than $10 an hour. There's so many opportunities here that people just don't realise and they tend to go to Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch to find them. They love to network, now politically aware, demanding honesty and accountability from their politicians. Someone pretty grunty who can get down to the grassroots of the community, um, who isn't afraid to just go all out for what they believe. I've always been against Labour and would have, you know, predominantly gone for National, but I think Helen, Helen's done a hell of a good job and at the moment I'm not sure which way I'll go, where I'll go. At the Wharf Street restaurant, Dave and Kate Goodman are undecided voters, but they say their votes will go to the party offering the best deal for small business. I think tax breaks, especially for people like us, I mean, we're in the same category as big business. So, you know, it's economies of scale. It's a lot, I think, a lot harder for small business. The Wine and Food Society has just named their restaurant the best in the country. But the Goodman say compliance costs are crippling their ability to make a dollar. It's pretty tough. Only on the uh, food side of things is uh, getting the supply. Especially these crayfish, which are, all seem to get exported. I don't think people realise what it's like or what an employer goes through to employ people and run a small business these days. There's so many behind the scenes things that are involved and costs also involved. During the course of this government, solo mum Katrina Thomas has gone off the DPB to support herself and son Mitchell. Bought a home recently. Um, I have a career, but I still consider myself very much a, a middle New Zealander, I guess maybe a new breed of the middle New Zealander who only has one income and is, is doing, doing their very, very best with just one income. A month out from election day, Katrina's still an undecided voter. I don't think that this is a very safe country right now and I'd, I'd like to see somebody actually do something constructive about that. I'm also at a stage where I guess I'm, I'm coming to the midpoint in my career. I'm thinking about retirement, I'm thinking about superannuation. I'm thinking that maybe superannuation won't be around when I retire. And uh, who's thought about that on my behalf? So at the moment you need those those politicians to come to you? Yeah, I do. Um, where have they been since the last election? That's what I'm thinking. Knowing he's yet to make a major impact, Tim McIndoe says his profile could have benefited with a longer run-up to the elections. I'm out there doing what I can. A lot of people do now recognise me, but I recognise the fact that 
they all know my two main opponents and the challenge there is for me to get myself as well known as quickly as I can. I hope you've been thinking pretty hard about this because um, yeah, it's quite, quite a few people will be interested in your opinions, that's for sure. For another indication of the region's electoral pulse, assignment turned to Taronga Boys College. It is, it is confidential, guys, so if you just... A uh, five-decile uh, school, the college prides itself on accurately decisions. reflecting public opinion. It seems to be a fight between the Greens, Labour and National at the moment. The poll's been carried out for the last ten elections. 1999 was the first time it got it wrong. This year, according to the poll of fifth, sixth and seventh formers, Winston Peters will retain Tauranga with 217 votes. Margaret Wilson and Tim McIndo polled 119 and 90 votes, respectively. But the party vote differs from tonight's One News Colmar Brunton poll. In the Tauranga Boys College poll, Labour wins, but National finishes a close second. National received 135 and Labour 139. Reporter Nick Andrew from the media class. The National Party leader, Bill English, has been out there with the boys. He's been involved in the Bay Park Speedway, he's been involved in the burnout competitions, and he's even involved in the fight for life. This has appealed to our age group, and they seem to either look up to him or respect him for that. You've got the sun, you've got the sea, you've got the fresh air. It does blow a bit here from time to time. We're just so incredibly As a lucky. teenager, Margaret Wilson used to holiday here at Mount Monganui Beach. Oh yes, and we used to go through to the blowhole. <laughs> Today it forms the backdrop to perhaps one of the biggest battles of her political career. So you can see that I was never going to make the women's cricket team. <laughs> I learned very early on that was not actually my forte. In true election tradition, both parties are equally scathing about their opponents. Margaret Wilson questioning whether the electorate can trust Winston Peters. In the past, Mr Peters has demonstrated that he says one thing and does another. It's very difficult to have a coalition partner. You can't trust if you don't know what they're going to do. So while I've worked with Winston in the past three years on issues that relate to Tauranga, and I think that's the responsible thing to do, I think in a larger context, um, if New Zealanders want stability of government, uh, then I don't think you'd be the best coalition partner. Excuse me, the people that sold $9 billion of state assets say they can't trust me. I tell you who can't be trusted, them and their record. In fact, if we're going to apologise to all the Chinese and the Samoans and everybody else around the world, how about we apologise to New Zealand taxpayers for selling $9 billion of their assets? That would be a good start. In the past three years, Winston Peters and New Zealand First have played their cards pretty well. They've been, I think, very astute. They have supported the government on key issues. They've appeared to be prepared to cooperate responsibly. They've opposed the government occasionally. And we had the wonderful instance just a few weeks ago where Winston Peters right, well, moved the vote of no confidence in the government in the budget debate and then abstained. How much more responsible and fence-sitting can you get? You never know your luck. If Winston Peters wins Tauranga, but New Zealand First fails to cross the 5% threshold, a percentage of the party vote could still see at least four New Zealand First MPs in Parliament. That's a bit dramatic. History could again repeat itself and Winston Peters could end up at the negotiating table. In 1996, the country went on hold for eight weeks as New Zealand First was courted by National and Labour as potential coalition partners. I didn't try to turn you up last time. I mean, the sky didn't fall in last time, did it? We were dealing with people who were starving for power or totally driven by it. Winston Peters was seen to betray many in his party by eventually forming an alliance with National. Whatever I asked for, they gave me. <laughs> True, you know. Would it be difficult this time? No, not in that context. Uh, you see, I know these people. They obsess with power. They'll do anything for it. Sell their souls, their party manifesto, their whole party history. And Labour National have done that. We're not going to so see a shopping list. We're not going to see a 70-page coalition agreement. On the other hand, Winston Peters would bargain uh, very, very strongly. He's a tough negotiator, but he's not going to come away with nearly the number of goodies, uh, either policy concessions or personnel concessions, uh, if he uh, were to form a coalition government with Labour. Uh, he won't be treasurer. I know what it's like to walk on matters of principle. I'm not that... Uh, enamored with the baubles of power, 
but you know it's a privilege to be a minister and to have a decisive uh, influence on events and so if that happens yes I, I would be you know more than happy to be a minister but not at any price and by word of mouth. Given New Zealand's practice of awarding the deputy prime ministership to the small party could this again see Winston Peters on the front bench as deputy prime minister? Well, that's possible yes if they really needed him for a majority I think that could still be possible. As Tauranga again proves to be a weather vane seat, Mark Kreisel has been looking at another key electorate, that of the Coromandel, and it's just over there. Coming up, a National Party redhead uses brown issues to try to turn this green electorate true blue again.